our website is turquoiseinamerica.com. And of course, we focus on turquoise from America. But turquoise from other parts of the world are also an important part of our turquoise market here in the United States. A lot of this has come because turquoise production in the United States has really cut back dramatically and we have much less turquoise being produced. At the same time, there's still a lot of demand, especially for mass-produced turquoise using a stabilized product. A lot of this comes from Mexico, from China, from Persia, from Iran, to a certain extent, and from Egypt. So I thought what we'd do is do an update on three of those countries, China, Iran, which is Persian turquoise, and Egypt. So the first one we're going to do is China. The information on this update comes from Yuki Wang. And Yuki is a young woman who works in the turquoise industry in the Hubei province, where the turquoise mostly originates from China. And she's very reputable. And if you wish to contact her, you can do so on Facebook. She's highly recommended. In any case, I contacted Yuki and I asked her about the situation in China. And uh, China has had a uh, moratorium. The government, which owns 51% of the turquoise mines, shut down all production in the spring of this year. Now, they said that was because there had been four deaths in the mine and they were concerned about safety issue. And I'm sure that is true because in China, my understanding is the majority of the turquoise mining is still deep shaft mining. And they've been doing this for a long time, for hundreds and hundreds of years. So certainly uh, safety and maintenance becomes an issue. Uh, one effect of doing that though is when you stop production, it's going to affect the supply of turquoise into the market and will generally have the effect of raising prices. Now, price is something that has dramatically changed over the last three years. I purchased some rough turquoise from Yuki, oh, three or four years ago, and it was very high grade, uh, dark web turquoise. You can see that turquoise in our videos on cutting turquoise. And um, she, when I asked her about that uh, uh, with, with the moratorium this year on turquoise, she said the price of that has gone up about 300% in over that time period. Um, so certainly uh, the supply issue is a factor. Although they have restarted production in September of 2022. So there will be more Chinese turquoise coming back into the marketplace. I wanted to show two photos here of two types of uh, ch uh, rough Chinese turquoise. The first one shows a kind of a blue green and you'll see around the edges there some brown and you do get that kind of mottled brown look in uh, Chinese turquoise. And the turquoise formation has a very typically Chinese look to it. Uh, the second photo we have is that rough that I purchased from Yuki. Uh, uh, several years ago, and this is a very high-grade uh, dark web turquoise. And we'll see in the next photo, we'll see how that high-grade or rough cuts, and you can get an example of what it looks like when it gets cut into either specimen or cabochon form. Um, she mentioned that a high percentage of what they're finding now is treated. Now, she mentioned 90% uh, of, of the material requires treatment. Uh, generally, in the U.S., we consider 80% as a rule of thumb. So, unless you are really certain about your source of purchasing Chinese turquoise, and you know that it is natural, you can assume that it's more probably uh, treated. Um, I also wanted to point out uh, that there is a 
theme park that was developed at the site of the old Yungai Temple Mine. And we talk about that area in Turquoise in America Part 2 in Chapter 5 on our chapter on First Contact when we describe how Chinese turquoise was reintroduced into the U.S. marketplace in the late 1980s. So I think it'll be interesting to see the photos from that time period and the description from Alan Voschal and Danny Lopaki and Ron Alexander when they were describing their experiences in the late 80s compared to what is happening now because evidently there's the thought to develop this into a tourist attraction. Although it's a pretty remote area, so I think the Chinese government has its work cut out for it in terms of promoting that. But we see a photo here of sort of the open area where you can imagine they'll have a pool and they'll have different recreational activities and of course very beautiful uh, mountain view there. And then we see another photo of the housing that they've developed there uh, at the theme park. So, you know, turquoise is very ancient to China, although jade still remains the preferred stone, and they're still trying to develop a market for jewelry because most of the history of jade and turquoise has been cutting it into uh, statues and other, and other forms. Uh, but I, I think it is uh, developing. They have a huge domestic market, and we'll see if they're able to develop that but we can continue to expect to see more Chinese turquoise in our U.S. marketplace.